All right, we're gonna keep rolling here into our, our next um, uh, couple presenters. Um, so I think we have online, we have um, Dr. Uh, Giuseppe Merla um, and Matteo Redente um, from Italy are going to talk about the importance of a collaborative network between researchers, clinicians, and patients. So uh, I see you're here. Go ahead, Dr. Merla, thank you. Hello, I'm trying to share my screen. I think that you can see it. Yeah, we can see um, it. Maybe yes, can you I just put, it yeah, part? sure, 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 don't worry. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so, um, okay, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for uh, inviting me. And I'm going to speak about uh, biobanking in Kabuki syndrome uh, research. And uh, this is the outline of my um, today uh, presentation. So I think that uh, it's important to define what uh, a biobank is. Here there are two official uh, official uh, definition of uh, biobank, one from Council of Europe and the second one from International Organization of Standardiz Standardization. But I would like to, uh, to share with you this um, definition of a biobank. A biobank is a collection of uh, biological samples, in our case for the topic of today of a human biological sample, along with the uh, associated information and clinical data, which is organized in a systematic, proper and structured way for uh, diagnostics, uh, for diagnostics and research purposes. And this is the most important point, uh, this collection must be available to the scientific uh, community. Um, today, I'm talking about this uh, type of uh, biobank that is a, an affected control biobank. That means is a biobank that contain biological sample taken from individual with specific diseases and from um, healthy individual that we use as control. If you, um, if we translate this definition to a biobank of rare diseases, that is the topic of uh, this uh, of today. The rare disease biobank is a non-profit service aimed at collecting, processing, storing, distributing uh, biological material from individuals with a rare genetic disorders and their healthy relatives. And I want a little bit to stress the points that how we are talking about rare disease that by definition are rare. We need to put as many as possible sample all together. So it's important to have access to a large collection of high quality sample and associated data, of course, because we need to achieve a critical mass of sample because we because this is the only way, in my opinion, to get for getting, you know, great result on uh, general disease in the rare diseases. And which are the basic activity of a rare disease biobank? First of all, so I have no time to go in detail on everything, but it's important to align that uh, it's, uh, we ask always, we, or better, we need to inform donors, people, before the expression of informed consent. Uh, there is no possibility to put a sample in a biobank without an informed consent. Each sample has a code. That means that we use encrypted um, sample. The sample, all the sample and data are recorded in a dedicated database where you can see many things as you can list, uh, they are listed here. And what we have in the Harabi Bank, what we store, what we process is and store, tissues, cell lines, mainly as nucleic acid, as DNA, RNA. Sometimes we also different biological fluids and we need to store in a proper way all this, for example, and so we need fridge, we need freezer, we need many things. And which are the aim, the two major aim of a, bio, a rare disease biobank? Diagnosis, 
and research. I am a PhD, I'm a biologist, and I'm more interested in, in uh, research. So we used the sample that are in the biobank, for example, to identify pathogenic mechanisms, to test in vitro new therapies for pharmacogenetic study, for uh, pharmacogenomic study, and many other, other, other things, other studies. Um, in 2008, uh, the Italian uh, Telephone Foundation uh, made a, a huge effort to establish the first, in Italy, the first network of biobank dedicated to the genetic rare disorders. Today, we are 11 bio members, that means 11 biobank, and I am here, as you can see, and this bank, this network, uh, is actively collaborating with many others uh, collection in Europe and also outside Europe. And this is now a workflow of our biobank. Of course, I am not going to explain in detail this, uh, this slide because it's complicated. It's just I want to share with you the, the idea that uh, the management of a biobank is not a simple task because involve many, many steps, involve many checkpoints because we need to be sure of every single step. So it's just to give an idea that uh, how complex is the management of a biobank. Um, one of the major activity the, uh, the Italian Teleton Foundation has made in this over the years is to push the collaboration with parent, with family association. And so far, uh, we have signed 16 agreements with the family association. And in 2017, uh, my, the, the, the biobank that I had has signed an agreement with the Italian Association of Kabuki Syndrome. And thanks to this uh, agreement, to this collaboration, and thanks also to the, uh, the large uh, number of clinicians that collaborated with, this, with me on, uh, on Kabuki syndrome. Since 2011, we collected DNA from uh, approximately 600 individuals with Kabuki syndrome, 100 RNAs from individuals with Kabuki syndrome. Uh, we also uh, established, we generated uh, cell lines, uh, skin fibroblasts from uh, around about 20 individuals with Kabuki syndrome. We use these cells to generate IPS that are in uh, the polypotent stem cells from six individuals with Kabuki syndrome so far. And we have already heard by uh, Professor Banka and Beyonce uh, how important are to use these uh, stem cells for uh, Kabuki studies. And of course, if not for all, but for a, a large collection, we have also personal, clinical, and genetic data. And we are also in contact with all the clinicians that follow this, this, uh, these people in case we need some update about, of course, the clinical, clinical data. Um, okay, what do we have done so far with this collection? Of course, first we have spread it, we have distributed a lot of DNA cell, cell lines to many researchers in the, in, the, in the planet I would say that needs to work on and that want to work on Kabuki syndrome. But now I just focus on three, three four uh, works that uh, we, we did in, my, uh, in the past, in, my, in the last three, four years in my lab. And uh, the, the first one is the, uh, we already, um, Dr. Beyonce, I think so also Professor Beyonce and also Banka already talked about this. But uh, the idea is that we use the, a large collection of a Kabuki, uh, um, individual with Kabuki syndrome to uh, implement these uh, new diagnostic tools that is the, the, the DNA methylation AP signature. Of course, I will not go in detail on this, uh, on this uh, paper. Uh, we use the scan fibroblast of uh, Kabuki, we, uh, individual with Kabuki to study the cellular metabolism and we demonstrate that in Kabuki cells, we, there are several metabolic alterations. 
in collaboration with the professor Banca, we are studying how using again skin fibroblasts and uh, stem cells from uh, um, taken from from an uh, individual with the Kabuki syndrome. We are studying how the mutation came to the D can ch are changing the structure and the, uh, the, the the architecture of the chromatin within. The, the cells of uh, uh, individual with uh, with Kabuki, of course, compared with alt uh, control, and finally, and this is a project uh, that I really uh, care about uh, a lot, is that we, we want to we are, we are starting with a study of microbiota in um, in Kabuki compared to control because probably many people knows that there is an increasing. A number of paper about the important to study microbiota in uh, genetic rare uh, disorder. So um, I'm concluding saying that uh, the biobank is an important essential tool for, uh, in general, for studying genetic disorder, but in particular for Kabuki syndrome. I think that it's important. Uh, we want to highlight the, the, the necessity to collaborate uh, to increase the critical mass of harmonized and shareable sample in data. Of course, we need money because uh, um, the, uh, the biobank, manageable bank and maintainable bank is very, very expensive. And I want to conclude to recognize the role, the active role of the affected individual and their family in the advancement, not only research of rare disease, but also in the biobanking process. I think that the families have a paramount role on, on research and, and on biobanking. And with this slide, I just want to thank all of you. And now I have to introduce, I think, my friends, uh, Matteo Redenti. Matteo Redenti is, a, is an expert of communication and uh, uh, but he's also the father of uh, Philomena. Philomena is a uh, uh, four years uh, old uh, uh, girl with Kabuki syndrome. Matteo, uh, three years ago, uh, started with uh, at that time a crazy idea that now is, uh, our, is something that he's trying to realize. To, and that uh, a very interesting idea, the very interesting program and project that I'm sure will, uh, uh, will change the life of uh, Kabuki family in, in Italy. And so I'm very glad to, um, to, to leave the, 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 uh, the stage to Matteo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Merla. I have to say that uh, I'm, uh, I'm very proud to be here and to have this great opportunity to join these wonderful events. And I, I wish to make my best uh, gratulation to the organizer, because I know that it's not so easy to organize and to collect so many important uh, and precious people in, in one day. So um, yes, as said just uh, Mr. Merla, I, I'm a father. I'm just a father the father of Kabuki girl, uh, and three years ago, I understood that uh, uh, to, to make a step ahead and to make an opportunity to my daughter, but not only to, to all the, the, the Kabuki baby that uh, I, I have opportunity to meet, uh, I need to understand which could be the key and, uh, and what was missing in Italy, uh, because was just acting an, an association as was mentioned before by, by Mr. Merla, and uh, it's a great association for the families, but we needed to make uh, uh, another approach. My approach was uh, to collect uh, uh, people, uh, especially uh, to let pass the communication uh, to the business, to the institution, and to involve them in the process. In this way, we create one event that was Ambassador Day. Thanks to Ambassador Day, uh, we, we help and we support uh, financially the biobank that was described before in a wonderful way by, by Dr. Merla. And, uh, and in these events, we connect uh, the, the topic of ESG that is very actual, connected to the charity and the research. And this was really, really great, uh, great idea 
uh, we were on TV, we were on newspaper, we, we let the people speak about, uh, and we give a prize as ambassador for Kabuki to many people. Uh, up to this, we arrived to the last edition um, in November last year, when we got as testimonial the Nobel Prize uh, Lech Wałęsa. Uh, that is the leader was the leader of Solidarność, no? and Solidarność is a big meaning, no, as 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 word. So uh, thanks to all this action, we were able to interest media and many corporate and companies. So we create an association. The name is Filoraro, and uh, we start to open. And now we are has said Minister Merla in, uh, in the final stage, uh, a real connection between all the uh, hospital and uh, the uh, point of the, the center of research as the biobank also of Minister Merla, in the way to create a network able to share data and especially to be near to all families. Because one of the problem when we start we can start a, a trial, uh, it's monitoring and give the opportunity to all the family also who have problem, economically problem, to move and to have the most near possible the opportunity to join uh, the research uh, trial. So starting from this, uh, we involve Bambin Gesù of Rome, that is one of the most important hospital, pediatric hospital in the world. And we enlarge this connection with other center in Italy. Of course, the dream, it will be become a network for Europe. And this kind of system, so connecting families with patients, hospital, center for the research, and business for the charity, is really a winning a winning uh, system. We have also to consider that we did a great action also institutionally, and uh, not thanks to us, but thanks to many people that believe in it. Uh, in Italy, uh, uh, enter now one new law dedicated to the rare disease, where we have the fiscal detraction for who make a donation that is 60%. And this is something revolutionary. We have to think that the maximum that we reach in Italy by fiscal detraction is 35. So this change a lot also the point of view and the possibility to the corporate to value, to invest and to make donation for the research and for the research in the rare disease. So this is, I, I hope, uh, uh, because I try to stay on time and uh, and uh, I hope to, to, to give a, a good overview of what we did. So we are ready to start with the network. Uh, Filoraro is active. Bambin Gesù is starting to organize the system inside and outside. Uh, so I hope soon to be able to get the first results and, to, and from tomorrow when we born one baby in Italy, uh, that will have uh, Kabuki syndrome, with Kabuki syndrome, could have one point uh, where it can be addressed immediately, follow, monitor it, and uh, involved in all the new action and uh, trial that uh, we, we wish to support. So uh, I hope that to, to stay on time, and, uh, and I thank you, I thank Jill to, to the time that they give to me. Thank you so much, Matteo. <laughs> Excuse me. It's very encouraging to hear about the work that you're doing and and the efforts to create this this network. It's um, it's both inspiring and I think is illustrating some really best practices for how the researchers and the institutions and the patient community can potentially all really work together. So thank you for sharing that. We will be coming back to Dr. Murla and Matteo for some questions in a little bit. Um, so they will stay on for that, but we're going to move on. And I'd like to introduce um, uh, first Chris, Kristen Anzelk, who's going to um, talk along with Matthew in a couple minutes 
about their own personal experiences in participating um, in the scientific research. And, um, and then we'll open it up for some, uh, some questions after that. So Kristen, are you, are you there? I see you. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. All right. All right. Go for it. Okay. Awesome. All right. We see your screen. Can you go into presentation mode? Yep. It's in. Hi, right, hey everybody. My name is Kristen, and I'm 37 years old from Maryland. Today, I want to share my experiences with research as someone who has Kabuki syndrome. Some advantages that I've found to doing research over the years is that I can help the community, help the researchers in several different ways, and I've learned how to better advocate for myself. Why I participate in research is I want to help change the research landscape. I want to have an impact. So future patients might not feel as alone or as isolated as we learn more about the syndrome and possible treatments. And I'm located close to Kennedy Krieger. I'm about half an hour away, so that makes it very easy for me to participate in research. I've done a few different, I've participated in research in a few different ways. I've done a couple of studies and surveys. I've submitted blood work and I've done two in-person studies. I did the diet trial, which although we are not sure of the results yet, I did manage to lose weight on the trial, even though that was not the intention initially. And I know that I helped shape research in a different, helped shape research, helped shape research and that is important to me. And I was thrilled to be able to participate in the said trial. Today, I wanna to focus on my experience doing the skin biopsy and what that was like. When I first went to the clinic that day, I was hesitant on if I would be doing this, the biopsy because I had never done it before. But I was going then to do blood work for some other studies. However, once I got there and was taken back to the room by Dr. Harris, I started to feel more at ease because she explained how she would be doing the procedure. And that made me feel less nervous because the doctor I already trusted and had established a great relationship with was doing it. What also helped was she allowed me to see the tool and she told me, told me each step of the way what she would be doing, which also helped ease my anxiety. In high school, I was diagnosed with ITP and treated with rituximab eventually after oral, after oral steroids were not as effective. I was always anxious about the blood draws, which went along with the appointments because I'm a notoriously difficult stick due to, the wig, due to wiggly veins. However, since summer and fall of 2021, it has become easier simply because I now know how to advocate, advocate, advocate for myself and my medical needs. For me, that and having providers I trust make all the difference. You can do this too. You can find a provider you trust, advocate for yourself or your child. For example, if it's easier to gain vein access in one area, tell the lab techs, and also might be helpful to go to a place familiar with the patient, patient since they already know them and are uncomfortable there. And if you're not located near a research center or a clinic such as Boston Children's, Cincinnati Children's, or Kennedy Krieger, find other ways to contribute, such as blood work and surveys. I've talked with families at in-person conferences in 2015 and 2018. Additionally, in 2021, I was invited by Dr. Harris to come and speak with her to medical students at University of Maryland. She was going to talk about Kabuki, and she wanted me to come and share my story have a conversation with her up on stage and do a QA and a after. Although initially nervous, I ended up going and doing it. And the students provided very positive feedback and it went amazingly well. And we returned in fall of 2022 to speak to the next group of medical students. I am also active on social media in public groups. And I've also done some private messaging with families from conference as well as with new patients through a general Facebook group through the Kabuki General Facebook group, as well as the adult and teen Facebook group. Posting about Kabuki last year led to me having a discussion with the mom and former member of my church that I'm close to. She's a nurse, so she was interested in learning more about Kabuki, which was positive not only for her to learn more, but for me to learn how to, to share my story. This past May, she asked me to write a letter for a college scholarship for her oldest. I agreed, and a couple weeks later, her her oldest and her youngest come up to my church as a surprise for me, and they have a special gift as a thank you for writing the letter. 
she had custom made a shirt that had Kabuki syndrome awareness on it for me. And this made me feel special because she thought about our conversation and it showed me how different parts of our lives can be intertwined. Studies I have done and other experiences I've had have opened up my eyes to new opportunities. In October 2021, I was at a research visit with Dr. Harris and after it was done, I mentioned I was interested in genetics, which I discovered in August after we had spoken to the students the first time. However, I was unsure of my options or what the process was of getting my getting started or getting my foot in the door, so to speak. She suggests she then suggests talking to Allison, who, the, who is in the genetics program at Hopkins, but she also mentioned she could see me doing genetics counseling because of my love of sharing my experiences and my love of teaching as evidence through talking to families at 2015 and 2018 conferences, as well as to the medical students. I did some research and realized that is the path I want to pursue. I hope I have given you some tips today and made you feel excited about participating in research. These experiences have positively changed my life with Kabuki syndrome and even opened up my eyes to new opportunities. I'm now happy to introduce Matthew Horner to you all. Matthew is also very passionate about increasing awareness and getting more people involved in research. Matthew. Okay, awesome. And now I'm going to share my screen. Cool. So All right, hello. My name is Matthew Horner. I am 21 years old and I live in Austin, Texas. I will be graduating from Austin Community College with a creative writing degree in December. Some of my interests are playing video games, hiking and hanging out with my friends. A uh, fun fact about me is that I am the first actor with Kabuki syndrome to play a character with Kabuki syndrome. Earlier this year in March, I played the role of Cody on the hit ABT, ABC TV show, The Good Doctor, and Cody also had Kabuki syndrome. I was diagnosed with Kabuki syndrome at the age of 14 back in 2015, and today I am going to talk to you about how to get more involved in research through my experience with the Atkins Diet Research Study at Kennedy Krieger. So why did I participate in research? I participated to hopefully be a voice for the Kabuki syndrome community, uh, to inspire others, and to learn more about Kabuki syndrome myself through this research. Why is this research important to me? So researchers at Kennedy Krieger studied the kabuki mice and gave them a ketogenic diet. The reason why they gave them this ketogenic diet was to see if it uh, helped improve their cognitive capabilities. And it did, it was successful, uh, but the ketogenic diet is highly restrictive. So I participated in a modified Atkins diet trial instead at the Kennedy Krieger Institute. The purpose of this trial was to see if it improved patient um, cognitive capabilities. And this is an ongoing trial, so the results are still being determined at this time. Um, how did I uh, participate in this research. I went to John Hopkins in Baltimore to have tests done twice. I had an EEG, a cognitive test, an MRI. Um, and also, once I got back from to Austin, I had to participate in the trial, which means I had to eat 20 carbs or less in one day. Some of my favorite things to eat on this diet were meat, vegetables, and peanuts. I also drew blood three times during this trial as well. And this was something that I'd never done before. I'd never gone on a diet like this before. So I was very nervous, but in the end I was excited because I knew I would be helping myself as well as helping others in the community through this research. How has this diet benefited me? I have faster reflexes, a clearer mind, a faster response time, and weight loss. I've lost about 60 pounds. Tips for getting involved. Um, 
I think that the Kabuki community is an awesome community. There's just something for everyone. So I highly suggest getting involved in the Kabuki community. You can visit the Kabuki Syndrome Foundation website, and there are also social media groups, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, the Kabuki Foundation is one of my favorites. Also, another way to get involved is through Kabuki gatherings. They're a great way to meet other families, and they're lots of fun. I've been to a few of them myself, and I've really loved them. The dates can be found on all social media platforms. And my experience has led to understanding more about Kabuki Syndrome myself, um, meeting a lot of new friends in this community, and hopefully helping others understand more about Kabuki Syndrome. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for their time, and I'd like to pass it over to the other panelists for the Q&A panel. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Matthew. Um, before we start the, the Q&A, I just want to especially thank um, both Kristen and Matthew for sharing their personal experiences in participating with the research. It's really awesome to hear, and I think it um, makes it a lot easier for other people to consider doing the same thing. Um, so we do want to encourage everybody um, listening to this conference today to um, please do consider exploring any of the research and trial opportunities that um, might be going on, might be at some of the institutions near you. Um, but as we mentioned earlier in the day, there is now funding becoming available to help people with travel expenses so that we can get a good representation of um, Kabuki families uh, participating in some of this work going on. So. Um, uh, we have a number of questions that have come in. Many of them are kind of directed to um, Dr. Merla, but before we um, get to those, um, Matthew, I wanna let you know that some people are congratulating you on your recent graduation. And um, I think some people want your autograph too, by the way. And um, Kristen, can you tell us real quickly um, the name of the Facebook page that you mentioned some other people um, have some teens and young adults who would like to connect. Yes, it is the um, Facebook page for Kabuki teens and young and young adults. Okay. So if you go into Facebook and you search that, it will pop up. Okay, thank you very much. We can um, maybe add that to the chat as well. Um, Dr. Merla, a couple of questions for you, kind of related questions. One is, um, the biobank that you um, were speaking to earlier, does that include only patients um, from Italy or from Europe right now, or is it, it broader than that? Okay, so at the moment, I would say that 99% of sample comes from Italy. But uh, for what I know, there is another biobank on Kabuki in France, in uh, Netherlands, maybe in uh, Manchester. I am sure that Professor Bangos is collecting a sample with the criteria of a biobank. So, of course, uh, it's not easy to collect sample from other countries outside Italy because it's determined because it costs, because uh, it's not easy to manage the shipment and, uh, and so on. A related question, um, though, is that um, if um, you know bio samples are being um, uh, captured, say in Italy, um, are those applicable to research going on in in other places, and can that be leveraged? Oh, well, the question is, how can we can distribute sample? Yeah, like how can that maybe be leveraged by you know researchers in in other parts of the world if it can. Okay, so one of the main mission, I would say, of the biobank is, is a distribute sample. So there is no cost in terms of uh, we are not to pay, we are not a supermarket, we are a, bio, we are a biobank. And, but of course, we, in the past, we, and also in, the, in these days, in current days, we are distributing sample. Of course, it's more easy to, to, to send outside Italy DNA but we have also sent to USA uh, stem, uh, stem cells, uh, kind of fibroblasts. So there is uh, just uh, some uh, rules there to follow. The one is, for example, we want to know uh, by the researcher uh, what he, she want to do with the sample. We want to know the project because we want to evaluate the project, not because we want big critics, because we, but because 
you know, for example, with cell, the cell, we don't have a lot of cells from one patient. So we need to be very careful when we distribute uh, this kind of cell. The other rule is that uh, we, we, will, we want to be sure that there is a money behind the project. That means that really the, the, the researcher can do something with this sample. And in general, we need to discuss a little bit before sending the sample out. Sure, thank you. Um, can you also at least help characterize like what kind of monetary investment is required to, to set up a biobank and maintain it? Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, uh, be, it's a good question because uh, maintain and establish a biobank is like expensive. It depends. It depends on uh, you are in an institute that has, for example, already fr freezer, fridge, uh, centrifuge, uh, culture, tissue around rooms, etc. So it depends. If you have to start from zero, that for nothing is very, very expensive. In general, to maintain, uh, you know, an already, I would say, ongoing biobank, I make some calculation is uh, approximately 100,000 euro per year. But I, of course, because they need also people there to work on. So also the personal, I say everything. Right. But this right. is for a for a small, small medium biobank. Small okay. medium sites, of course. It depends on number. When we started with bio, this biobank, we decided to focus on very few and specific disorders. In fact, we have also not only Kabuki uh, sample from Kabuki individuals, but also for many other chromatinopathies, the Mendelian disorder that's uh, Professor Beyonce we was talking about early. So uh, that's my was my choice to focus on uh, a very specific group of diseases. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna ask one last quick question um, and then um, I'm gonna turn it over to um, one of our other board members. Um, and by the way, there are other questions um, that have been showing up here that we just don't have time to get to all of them. So we'll still do our best to answer them um, later on in the conference or following up um, from today. And um, so one other question related to um, the biobank is how long does it tend to take to go from sample collection to an IPSC line mm -hmm. that is ready to share? Uh, in the perfect world, I will say three, four months, six months, three, six months. In the perfect world, everything's work perfectly, work well. Uh, it depends. It depends on many things. So these, uh, you know, are techniques. This depends which kind of technique you want to use. Uh, many, many things. But uh, realistic time is three, six months. Okay. From Thank you. I want to mention also that there have been um, several really great questions that have come in also for Kristen and, and Matthew. And just in the interest of time, um, I'm going to hang on to those because I know you guys can help answer some of those in the chat. And I think we'll be joining us again later in the day um, for the informal sessions at the end. So um, if you didn't get your questions for Kristen and Matthew answered um, now, um, we'll hopefully come back to that as well. So with that, I'm going to close this part of the session. Thank you again, um, Dr. Merla and Matteo, Kristen and um, Matthew. We really appreciate um, all the information you shared with us.